for the longest time I didn't want to live and then all of a sudden I have this 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 uh this urge to live again you know and it feels great now I get to help people that I wasn't able to help I got my family back I got my friends back I got my job back I got hey doctor yeah Got yeah, it. we got figured it. Figured it out. Get my lighting to figure out. I don't get the thing wow, out. you look great. That's an amazing background. I'm trying to get the light to 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 get off the background so I can. I'm not in the dark, but we're doing the best we can. Graphic, good to see you. Good to see you. Good to see you, doctor. Nice, nice. For everyone else who's gonna watch, maybe one day, this is Dr. Neil Schwartz. Today we have a very special guest with us, a local rapper from Anaheim, California, named Graphic. I am seeing Graphic for the first time right now. We've met on the phone for the past six, seven months. And um, before we get into any of that, um, can I, do I have permission and does my clinic also have permission to use this video to help others? Yes, sir. Absolutely. Anything to help another fellow person in need. All absolutely. Right. All right. We'll, 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 we'll help them. We'll help them. Um, simply, the truth is always more interesting than fiction. What was the truth of your life six or seven months ago before we met. Can you describe it in detail, in vivid detail, what, what your life was like? Yes, sir. So I, um, I have been an alcoholic since I was 13. I am very, very fond and very into the punk rock community. So that's a big thing, drinking and partying. So I started drinking at 13. Uh, hurt my insides from drinking so much alcohol to the point where I... Um, can no longer drink. So around tw I'm 26 now, just turned 26. But at 22, I started to abuse meth with alcohol in hopes that I would have energy, but also be able to party. Eventually, I couldn't keep up with the alcohol. So it resorted to heroin. I started smoking heroin when I was 20. I take that back. I started doing meth when I was 21. I started doing heroin when I was 22. Um, I couldn't drink anymore, so I needed a downer. I needed a downer. I have a lot of, I suffer from a lot of trauma, PTSD, um, really harsh background, you know, born and raised in the ghetto, um, physical trauma, emotional, sexual trauma, you name it, right? Mm -hmm. So I needed something to kill the pain. That's all I've known all my life is to kill the pain with drugs. Drugs was what, what helped me kill the pain or at least forget about it for a moment. It never really killed it. It only enhanced it. It only made it worse. My family didn't want nothing to do with me. My friends didn't want nothing to do with me. Wow. I didn't want anything to do with me. At that point, doctor, I was just kind of waiting to die. I felt dead inside. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to die. You were on empty. I, you were fully on empty. Yeah, I was completely on E, and I had never really experienced that. I've had my moments of homelessness as a child. Mm -hmm. I've had my ups and downs. I've done every drug in the book. You name it, I've done it. I've I've consumed almost every drug that is that I at least in America that I know of. I've done it. So, I mean, at that point, that was my rock bottom. Um, everybody was doing fentanyl that day, and. Um, it was starting to get much more difficult for me to get heroin. I couldn't get heroin anywhere because everybody was doing fentanyl. That's the new thing. I was too scared to consume it because I didn't want to die. But I wanted to die, but I didn't want to die. Very contradicting uh, lifestyle, right? right. So um, I ended up uh, seeing everybody nodding out on fentanyl and being scared that, man, someone could go out on me or, or better yet, what if I accidentally take a hit of this? It was getting to the point where I was consuming heroin that I knew had fentanyl in it, but because I was so dope sick, I'm shivering, I'm crying, I'm for no, like my eyes are just tearing up, you know? I'm cold, I'm miserable, my bones hurt. I just started smoking heroin with, with Fetty in it. It was the truth. I, I could smell it, I could taste it, and I just started doing that. And uh, I remember that was my rock bottom. Two in the morning on the dot, I got my ass up, I walked back to my family's house, even though they didn't want me there. And I, um, I fell asleep. And then I ended up uh, getting a Suboxone from the street. I took the Suboxone and then the next day I checked myself, myself into detox, then went to rehab I see. after that. Did, do you think the switch over to fentanyl was because it was available and cheaper? Or, or what was the reason that all that time you had done fentanyl and then you ended up doing fentanyl? Is that just because it was available, the availability? <laughs> Everybody just started doing fentanyl because I, I guess it's more of a high. It's cheaper. 
and it's 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 expensive it's expensive don't get me wrong but the thing is is that you don't need that much to get high so people that have been long time i i met people that were long time users of of iv injections of 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 slamming heroin and it got to the point where they didn't need to inject themselves with heroin anymore all they needed was one two hits of fentanyl and then bam they were high the whole day so i'm talking about people that have been abusing forever uh, for years you know had you ever tried suboxone prior to that day before you ended up in the rehab had you been on yeah. suboxone in the past you knew about it you knew about like how, how much had you used it before tried it i had attempted suboxone once just because i was scared of the kick and now had it been maybe like a year prior Okay. I didn't really know much about it. I just knew that um it was going to help me alleviate my bones and my pain and not have to suffer. So a lot of people say state that you get high from uh suboxone that you get loaded. Mm-hmm. I don't know what the hell they're talking about. I do not get loaded. <laughs> I don't feel nothing on it. I just I just felt normal, but then of course that same night, maybe I want to say 14 hours, 12 hours after taking that suboxone a year prior to actually getting sober, um, there I am looking for heroin again because I want that high. I was craving that high. So supposedly it takes away the the uh, the cravings and whatnot. It definitely helps, but at that time I just wasn't ready. So okay. yeah, I, I I I did it once just to try to get sober up on myself. I really thought I could do it on my own because I hadn't been doing heroin for such a long time. Uh, just like two little less than two years smoking, you know, mm-hmm. prior and then occasionally just binge drinking um to stop doing heroin so i would smoke heroin that two three months and then i would drink three four months and then i would do heroin again but yeah um it didn't help i needed clinical and and medical support i needed therapy i needed like a like a whole group of people to really help me out including okay. myself i really needed to get my head out of my ass which took a while, long time but again i had to learn a hard a lot of hard lessons and I definitely did at that rock bottom. Sometimes that's what it takes for some of us. Got it. Got it. And then you got a village. You met Sam first at the rehab and then he got you in touch with me. Is that how it went, went down? You met Sam before me? I, I met Sam. Yes. I called him uh, two days. In, uh, no, maybe a couple days before my detox. Mm-hmm. And then I let him know, hey, I'm going to go to rehab. I'm going to run out. I need a, 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 you know, a month supply because I'm going to be going to, to Colton, California, a couple, maybe two hours away from here from Orange County. Mm-hmm. And Sam was so nice that same day. He barely even knew me. He came all the way to, to, from the office, dropped off my medication at the detox himself. He did that out of yeah. the kindness of his heart. He's a great man. Yeah, yeah. I'm glad you guys connected. And then um, he got you in touch with me and we went on that three-way first call. That was about seven months ago. Yes, sir. And when we first spoke on that first visit, what was the feeling that you got from both Sam and I as a team and, and myself? What was the feeling you got about your prognosis? Did you have a different, um, maybe a revelation or anything that, that after that first meeting? Um, I just knew that you guys were very serious about helping people. And I knew that you guys cared. So it gave me a little bit of more motivation to really stick to my guns because, you know, you guys are people that I barely met and you guys cared about me enough to want to help me, you know, and uh, you giving your advice, meditational advice, uh, physical fitness advice, you know, that's something that not a lot of people do. And the fact that you guys go out of your way constantly and constantly to help people, that's been a big factor to my sobriety. The check-ins, you know, get telling me, hey, a little bit of this, a little bit of that. You got to get the mind, body, and soul right. You know, that's the quote from Dr. Short. the mind, body, and soul. Yeah, you and gotta, that's something that I live by, thanks to you. <laughs> Very good. Yeah, we're all putting the energy out there every day, both of us, both of us. Um, so it's been seven months or so. How would you describe, in like, in detail – your life now. I mean, now you're in a, a clear moment. Um, it's been seven months. What's your life like now? Are, are you getting your, your, your life together? How do you feel? How do you feel mind, body, spirit? Um, I feel great. I feel great. I have a little bit of other physical health problems like my stomach. Uh, I just got diagnosed with arthritis. So um, that's stuff that I'm working on. Mentally, I feel a lot more clearer. I feel just so grateful to be alive because 
for the longest time I didn't want to live. And then all of a sudden I have this, 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 uh, this urge to live again, you know, and it feels great. Now I get to help people that I wasn't able to help. I got my family back. I got my friends back. I got my job back. I got, you know, now I'm a little bit more stable financially. I had nothing to my name, you know, and I was just broke, miserable, not doing nothing. Now I have something to live for again. You know, my family, I'm involved with my family and all of my loved ones again. Um, Nice. You know, I go to work every day. I mm-hmm. work on, I go for walks occasionally. I got a gym pass recent, recently. Um, and now I'm really focusing f- on my physical health this year. I'm tackling my physical health. I'm going to yeah. start working on more music. We got to put Anaheim on the map. Yeah. You know, <laughs> so we're doing that, you know. But yeah, it's been a, it's been a crazy ass adventure and a crazy ass uh, wow. mission that I was on, to, uh, Dr. Schwartz. But you know what? Um, I'm grateful. God has blessed me. God is so good. And um, I I couldn't be grateful enough to be here right now. The nice. number one thing I could say that I am right now is blessed and grateful. Nice, nice. When you recall that level of hopelessness and on empty, what I said on empty and hopeless back when, you know, seven months ago, do you th- was there any foresight or, or thought that maybe you could get this feeling you have today or it was really just a blind spot or you thought maybe like, do you even think it was possible back then or you just got lucky enough to find a good rehab place and Sam and whatnot? Or, do you, or did you foresee a possibility? I, I always told myself, you know what, I'm not going to be addicted forever. I, you know, I didn't realize that. First of all, I didn't know addiction was a disease that is forever, right? And also, I, I didn't think that because um, I was just dibble and dabbling in the heavy drugs. I was just trying it out, testing the waters, just having a little bit of party time, you know? I didn't expect myself to get full-blown addicted because I was just dibbling and dabbling with it a couple times throughout the year in 2021. Then 2022 hit, couldn't drink alcohol anymore because now I'm throwing up on myself. So then I started just smoking heroin on a daily basis, put me to sleep, made me a little hungry here and there, um, got me to feel in the, you know, I would be around a lot of, I was in a really toxic relationship and toxic relationships in general with friends and whatnot. You just are so numb when you're on an opiate that you don't even care. You're just, everything is just, you're just so careless when you're, when you're high like that. You just don't give a, you don't give a crap, you know? And, uh, yeah, I, um, I knew one day, one day by the grace and the mercy of God that I would somehow get out of it but I knew that it was going to take something drastic like an OD or a near psychosis or because again I'm a stubborn you were running it to the to the mat running it to the real bottom got it got it got it Um, I said let me let me see let me see uh how bad it gets and maybe I could be a functional drug addict who knows maybe I could pull this shit off you know but no I couldn't have pulled it off I was a horrible drug addict yeah, there was no function. <laughs> there was no pulling at all. Um, yeah, if, if, if I did you, it. I failed dramatically and horribly. Everyone, everyone. Um, if you were speaking to someone else who didn't, who was hesitant to get clean or hesitant to get on Suboxone or hesitant to get help, really, to reach out for help, um, what would you tell someone who's like kind of on the edge or like thinking they could do it them, themselves, but everything in their life is falling apart, but they're kind of overconfident of that? What would, you let them, what would you tell them as far as reaching out, even reaching out for anything, you know? You know what? I would tell them that they deserve a happy and successful life. No matter what your background, no matter how much trauma and how much pain you've endured, and no matter how much of a drug addict you are, it doesn't matter if you do one gram or 10 grams, it doesn't matter if you slam, fucking turkey base, drink, you know, smoke it. You deserve to live a happy and a successful life. You deserve to accomplish your dreams. You know, time is of the essence. Time is of the essence. We don't have that much time. God has only given us a certain amount of time. We don't know when we're going to go. You deserve a chance to live your life to the fullest, happy, successful. Whatever it is that you want to do in your life, you deserve to do it. And a sober life is so worth it. A sober life is so worth it. You get to do everything that you want in sobriety. It's not boring. People say it's boring. It's not that boring, really. Once you learn to have fun sober, the rest is, is history. It's over. It's a wrap. You're having a blast without, yes. without you, the blast. <laughs> your energy seems really high now. You seem really like not like a sick patient of mine. You seem really like, yes, really good energy. Um, you're, on, you're still on Suboxone now, right? 
Yes, sir. And what, how many milligrams a day, like, do you need to as the least effective dose? I take eight milligrams. Oh, uh, so just a, a low on the lower end. And does that bother you at all, as far as stigma or anything like that? Or you have you gotten to my clarity where this is the better outcome for the long term? And one day, someday, if we get off it or wean off it, who cares? But are you comfortable on it now, stigma wise? And and like, are you comfortable to talk? Oh about yeah. It? I'm I'm definitely comfortable with it, and you know what? There is that stigma or that that myth that oh, you're on to boxing, you're not sober, right? You know, right, right, right. Uh, look, at, look or, at your energy, look at your productivity, look at your relationship, yeah. Look you at know your, what? Look at your money, look at your job. This is the mark of someone who's producing. You know, exactly. Yeah, I would much rather be on to boxing, taking my ass to work at six in the morning exactly. every day, coming home and helping my mother, coming home and taking care of my family than being on the streets fucking stealing foil from Vons and stealing a straw from Jack in the Box to go smoke some heroin that's been stepped on, pissed on, everything, you name it, cut with fentanyl, I just so it, I can overdose in a fucking dirty restroom. I'd yeah. much rather be on the boxing. I think it's a, another example of perfect is the enemy of good, you know, to try to get exactly. perfectly clean in reverse time to where you're 10 years old again is such a far off, you know, fantasy that you can never get good, which is good is on Suboxone, working, good relationships with your family, you know, good, giving good energy. Here you are just like lighting people up. Um, I think people understand perfect is the enemy of good. Sometimes you just gotta take it stair steps, good. And if sometime in the future you wean down to two milligrams and one milligram and yeah. maybe, maybe like safely to zero milligrams one day, that would be great. Absolutely. But, but this is good. I mean, this is as good as any other not sick yeah. of mine, you know? Yeah, Suboxone so for me, doctor, is not forever. This is like how I've seen, how I've read about it, how you've explained it to me, at least to, to my knowledge, how you've explained it to me. When I have my car, when I have my own little apartment, when I have more shit going for myself, then I'm going to want to get off of it. Right now, not only is it helping me, but more than anything, it literally blocks opiates from, you cannot consume opiates on this, on this medication. Yeah. So, even if I wanted to go get high right now, I can't. I have yeah. too much Suboxone in me. So yeah. that really saves me. It really saves me. Once my life is really together, I don't have everything together right now. I'm barely starting. It's only been about seven months, you know. But I've come a very long way in the time that I have consumed Suboxone. But you know what? I do suggest that people that really can't, you know, just stay sober without maintenance. They need maintenance for opiates. It, opiates is very difficult to get off of. It's very addicting. We all know how it is. You know, well, at least the opiate uh, uh, users, you know, we don't, we want to go back to that high because we love that high. It just feels so good. It's so, it kills the pain. It does all that. But you know what? Suboxone will save your ass in the meanwhile while you're getting your life together. And then when you have your car, you have your family, you have a good job, you're getting your money, you're doing the things you love, you're not gonna wanna go back to smoking dope in the in the dirty restroom at the park with a you're, bunch you're, of other people that don't care human, about you. No, you're a different human being at that point. It, there's, it's an unrecognizable human being at that point. Exactly, you're not gonna wanna go back to that and, and live, you're not gonna wanna go 10 steps back, trust me. Once you have your life all in order, Bam. There you go. Thank you, Suboxone. Thank yeah. you. Good looking out. Thank yeah. you, Dr. Short and Sam. Yeah. <laughs> you know? thank, thank the biochemists and families together and Sam and me. It's all one big, like, it's, it's, when you get a good recipe, there's a lot of ingredients. And I think what we're seeing here is the outcome, the overall clinical outcome from a good recipe. You know, I couldn't really do it without Sam. Sam couldn't really do it without me. I, I can't really do it without the Suboxone. So you got to give the biochemists their credit. And then really the clinic, Families Together in Orange County, is what puts the whole thing together in a system. So, and even Orange County, who supports families together, there's a lot yes. of recipe that is bringing this and other good outcomes like this. And I think we're just gonna start capturing them and let people know that when you get all the pieces together in the village and you get it right, the outcome is point A to point B and it seems like magic, but really it's just a lot of, you know, deliberate moves. Yes, sir. Yes, thank you, Dr. Shorts. Thank you, Sam. God bless you both. Thank you, families together. You guys helped me save my life. I'm truly grateful. You know, I couldn't have done this without your guys' help. You guys really mean the world to me. And anytime you guys need my help, please feel free to reach out to me. I'm always down to help another fellow addict. Or even if it's just community work, I'm always down for community work. Cool, cool. Thank you. Thank you. I think everyone will appreciate that. Um, it's been great talking to you. We're going to keep these going. Maybe we'll meet again sometime soon on, on Insta. We're going to keep talking on the phone. 
And um, it's before you leave, you want to show us what Anaheim, California has as far as local rappers? Okay, I, I got a little something. Let, let, let's uh, look forward to the future. Let's, uh, let's, let's leave on a positive note, you know, no negativity, good vibes only. So this is something I wrote a while back, but um, something that is very um, relevant to my life today. Okay, uh, it's called uh, The Remedy to Heal a Broken Heart, okay? goes, beautiful day to be alive. Acknowledge my goals and thrive. It's okay to take a break, but no need to take a five because graphics coming at you live from the Juice County. And I just want to love all the people around me. I got to thank those who found me, the ones who surround me. Yo, peace is my only mindset. You haven't heard my best rhyme yet. No worries for the haters. I'm going to let the shine threat and make the most of a short time set. No anxiety tying me down with hand ropes. I keep on striving because I know I can't cope. Rest in peace, be me. Nico and cloaks, more to name, but I carry on with grand hopes, living to the fullest in their memory. Much love to those who've been a friend of me, and I got something for an enemy. Yeah, a kind word and some positive energy. Damn, I'm loving the sunset and the weather, G. <laughs> yeah, nice, nice. I'm looking for the remedy to heal a broken heart, because I'll be damned if I let it fall apart. Staying away from haters is really just a start. I got to do the most in this life for I depart. Yeah. Yeah. You know it. That was sick. I like that. I like that. Uh, I like that love to the enemy. That was great. Good hook there. That was great. Thank All you right. for promoting me. We yeah. out here, Anaheim, California, Young Graphic, your favorite punk rock rapper from Anaheim, Orange County, California. Graphic hit me up. up. <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna hit you up again. Just keep keep working on your next uh, Suboxone rap. We're gonna hit you up again for the follow up. This is gonna be great. Keep working on it. Yes, one. sir. We're gonna hit you up for just for the raps. Let's, we're gonna go right to raps <laughs> next time. Boom. Go right into business. <laughs> you already know it. I'm all about the business. <laughs> all right, all right. All right, I'll, doctor. I'll talk to you soon. Thank you so much for coming on. Take care. All right, talk soon. Bye. See you. See you.